the only debate we should be having right now. I think, you know, there's never going to be a good time for the other side to debate this. They're never going to be happy with whatever time scale we use. So, um, yeah, I think now is a very pertinent time. I think if you look at the chaos created by the UK government, there's never been a better time to debate independence. Um, and I think that's the trick that they miss when they use that argument is that this isn't about independence just for the sake of independence. This is about cleaning up the mess of the UK government and how tied Scotland's hands really are um, in this union. So I think, you know, they can talk about this is the first debate of the, of the new year and this is not when we've not got our priorities in check. It, it's just a, it's just a non-argument. It's, it's, it's really all they have left. And uh, Pamela, a, a non-argument and never is the right time for opposition parties to discuss independence. I think there'll be viewers all over Scotland shaking their heads at that statement. The number one concern for people at the moment is the NHS. We've had headline after headline over recent weeks of records being broken for all the wrong reasons. When we're seeing waiting times extended, people waiting more than 12 hours to be seen at accident emergency. I think that MSPs who voted for that um, in the debate today in favour of the um, of the the um, the motion will have to face their constituents in surgeries on Friday uh, and I don't know how they'll be able to hold their head up. Very briefly on that point, Kelly, uh, NHS, particularly the crisis there, should that not be the first thing? Very briefly on that. I, mean, I work for the NHS and I, I mean, I go back to my original point. Independence is for the NHS. The reality is, is that without the appropriate fiscal powers and without the powers that we need to control our NHS properly, we can't get a grasp on this crisis to the best of our ability. And I think unionists know that. They're choosing to be dishonest about it to, to take the focus off of the argument. Uh, the Pamela, NHS is it... under control of the SNP for 15 years. The NHS oh. is we know that. We do know that, but we know that we don't have full of fiscal autonomy. And we know that that's what we need if we want to mitigate the disaster caused by the UK government. OK, let, let, let's focus, uh, Pamela, on the, on the actual independence uh, debate this afternoon, though, uh, rather than w w the anymore on the NHS. Uh, most of these MPs were elected on a mandate for independence, so surely that's the right thing to discuss it. But look, there's been poll after poll that shows that people do not support this government focusing on independence. The poll that we did with Servation yesterday um, was published and showed that only 8% of people thought that independence should be in the top three priorities of, that govern of this government. 8% chose it to be one of their top three priorities. This is not in chime with what the people of Scotland want. Um, barely a third want the election to be a de facto referendum. People want their government to do the job that it was elected to do and it is not to focus on breaking up our country. It's to do the day job and sort out our public services. Kelly. It's just utter nonsense. Like we've seen consecu multiple consecutive polls since the Supreme Court government, since the Supreme Court ruling, sorry, um, putting independent supporters ahead. And at this point, it's becoming a bit insulting to the electorate of Scotland. We're, we're just telling, we're, unionist politicians are telling people, the people of Scotland, that their, their opinion doesn't matter, that they're not going to get what they want regardless. And I think if, to, to repeat what was said in the chamber today, if a ballot box doesn't count in terms of deciding when we get our next our next referendum. What does? What is it going to take for unionists I, to respect the right of the Scottish people to decide? The answer is that they're never going to respect I, I, I will it. Put that, respect I'll it. put that to Pamela in a moment, but you, you mentioned the Supreme Court ruling. The Scottish Parliament doesn't have the legal right to hold such a referendum, so why debate it? Because, you know, it, it's going to happen, inevitably. We, we look at the polls, 72% of young people want independence. If this is truly a democratic country, we will leave when we want to leave. And uh, Pamela, how, how, given the votes for the SNP, the election after election, what needs to be done for a pathway to independence? Look, just on that, people vote for parties for a huge range of reasons, which is the main reason why we shouldn't have a de facto referendum for a general election. Um, people don't just vote for the SNP um, because they support Scotland leaving the UK. Um, there's a huge variety of reasons. Um, and if you look at their manifestos in the past, there's a whole range of things that the SNP do have a mandate for, which still has strong public support, that they're not doing. 
Um, back in 2017, they said there was going to be a nationalised energy provider, which is badly needed now. Um, where is where is that nationalised energy provider? They said they wouldn't cut police numbers in the last manifesto just a year ago, um, and that has been um, police numbers have now been cut. Um, they have a strong mandate to nurture our NHS, and it is okay. not happening. And it's not just about resources; it is okay. about bad planning which has been going on for 15 years. What, what did we hear today, Kelly? That was new. I mean, it's the same. It's the same stuff coming from the unionist politicians. It's the same arguments, the once in a generation stuff, the same sound bites. We're not getting anything new. What needs to happen is we need to drive forward with our vision for an independent Scotland, and that's so, what the Scottish Parliament did today. So uh, there is to be a special conference of the SNP in March. What do you want to see come from that? How will it change the debate or move the debate forward in 2023? For me, I want to focus less on independence uh, as being just a standalone issue. I think most independent supporters want independence, not for the sake of independence, but so that we can truly harness Scotland's potential and make it the fairer country that we know that it can be. Um, I think that the, the problem for me is that we've just outgrown the union. It doesn't work for Scotland. It, it never really has worked for Scotland. And it's time for us to naturally part ways. And I want to see the case made for a, a, a positive case for that. Uh, and Pamela, how do you see the debate developing through 2023? Can the UK government just keep saying no, no, no? Look, I, like I, I just don't think there is a positive case for to break up Britain. With um, the SNP have had a long time in power to make that argument, and we've not heard it in the last 15 years. That's not going to happen in 2023. It's not going to happen at the conference in March, and there will not be a referendum this year because the people of Scotland do not want that referendum. Finally, on that, Kelly. It's just it's utter denial at this point. You know, the polls are clearly saying that a majority of people in Scotland do want a referendum and would vote for it. And whether the unionists okay. like it or not, okay. independence not is inevitable that. and it is coming. It is coming. Whether you like it or not, you can shout about it, you can stamp about it. It's going to happen. You either what get on board it? or you fight it until it happens. OK, very, just la last word there, Pamela. There is no problem saying that people want it in here. Let, 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 let Pamela in here. Let Pamela in here. Sorry, Kelly. Let Pamela in here. Thanks, John. There was a small increase in support for independence just after the court hearing. That has now fell away. The polls um, that we've seen this week uh, are showing that that's not the case anymore. But what we have seen strongly in polls is that people, even those who support independence, do not think that referendum should happen anytime in the near future. Okay. And they do not think it for this government. And I'm sure we'll be returning to this many times through the course of the year, but uh, Pamela Nash, Kelly Given, thank you both for joining us in Scotland tonight. Thank, thank you. you.